Hi, um, welcome to a uh, digital art tutorials uh, tricks and tip. Um, uh, normally, I advise students and beginners to stay away from the dodge and burn tool uh, because I think it becomes a magic bullet for a lot of people, and uh, and um, they tend to rely on it rather than thinking and and knowing what values of things to put down. But where it does work out really well is in rendering. Um, I'm using it as a primary rendering tool, which I always tell people never to do, but this is an exception, uh, for doing monsters and, and really cool kind of beasties with a sort of, you know, uh, glisteny kind of texture. So here, here's something that I did real quick, and I'm going to go ahead and, and show you how to, how to do the same thing. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and make a layer on top of this one and fill it with white. That's filling it with black. There you go. I hit the X key and that changes the uh, foreground background colors. Um, and I'm going to have it on Dodge. Now, um, the cool part about this tool is uh, also you want to notice that I have it on highlights as well, and we'll get into that more as I'm doing the tutorial as to the difference between highlight shadows and midtones. But anyway, on highlights is where you want it, and uh, if you hold the uh, Alt key, um, it will switch to um, to the uh, burn tool. So I'm holding the Alt key right now, and it's great because you can just switch back and forth. So I'm going to just do kind of a skeleton thing. Um, also, when you're sketching, you know, try and go with as big a brush as you can to start, and then then go into the smaller brushes. Also, by going kind of sloppy like this, you'll see I'll kind of get some shapes and stuff that maybe later on I'll want to mess with. So again, I'm just going to go for kind of a quick sort of skeleton, monstery kind of shape and I'm just roughing in using again I'm holding the alt key I'm just just using the burn tool you can see how the shapes kind of happening and these shapes and such and see that's a nice little accent there that's those two little I'll probably accentuate that you know think about some other sort of marks coming across and things like that that again later would be cool to accentuate because it's a monster so he's going to have all kinds of things on him okay um, I take my finger off the alt key and now I'm back to the dodge key and I'm just going light if you go heavy see how it automatically kind of really gives you a a, uh, a white out but I'm not going to do that I'm just doing little bits the pressure is fairly light. If you have trouble controlling this, by the way, just reduce the exposure. I have it at 92%, um, so I really kind of am very happy with the control right now that I have with my tablet. Um, but if I was having them on a machine that I wasn't familiar with and I didn't have that much control over, then I would probably lower that. Okay, but you can see how I'm trying to, just kind of starting to almost just by flicking up and down here, I'm, 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 I'm really kind of being very sketchy and I'm getting these kind of interesting shapes. And you can get some interesting stuff too if you go across. I'm going back to the Alt key and I'm emphasizing that shape. So it's back on the Dodge tool. And I can emphasize some more of that sort of shape coming out. And see, I've, since I've blocked in the stuff, now it's like just doing the fun part, just adding the detail. And as you're sculpting things, because that's what this really is kind of like when you're using this tool for this stuff, is you're really kind of carving more stuff out. I'm, I'm bringing in the sort of the, the darker part of the nose in there. And I'm going to go with a smaller brush. Again, if you, you want the real sharp detail, it's the smaller brush that will do it for you. And you see how you get that kind of glistening kind of shape, or not shape, but coming out there. And I'm just going to start see by going on the top of the highlight, you get this sort of roundy vein kind of thing. And see these other kind of shapes that are already kind of cropping up in here. Where I'm just going to emphasize them by highlighting the top of them. 
and I'm not going to go straight down so it's smooth like that. I'm going to just kind of stop and start. And give us a little bit of this sort of thing. This one they become more like wrinkles. They're glistening kind of, you know, I, I would say a little bit, you know, sort of Geiger-esque. That'd be a great person to look at if you really want to do more of this sort of monstery kind of stuff. Let me see here. I go across a little bit. And if you ever find that anything's getting like too much, let's say that's, that's too much of a highlight for you, again, I just hold the Halt key. I'm, I'm going up to a little bit bigger brush. And I can just pull it back in. Or really kind of, you know, even bring that crease now a little deeper. See how that's working? Going back to a bigger brush. Darken in that a little bit more. But see, bigger, um, the bigger the brush, the, 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 uh, the softer sort of the details are, and the smaller the brush. See, this is good for just getting kind of the bigger shapes, but if I want to go in and really accent these creases that I'm kind of building here, I'm going to want to jump to a smaller brush. So it's always, again, big to small. But in some situations where you want to correct some things, then you're going to go the other way around because you don't want to try and do a big value correction. Um, with, see how they have that nice, those nice little weird shapes that are coming out now down here? Really just happy accidents that you're just kind of, you know, taking the, 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 the cue from and just kind of going with it. Again, no real, you know, it's not like I really planned this out. I'm just just there doing it. Um, but again, uh, <coughs> like I said, if you wanted to do a big global change, like this whole area beneath wasn't light enough or dark enough for you, whatever the deal was, uh, you'd want to make a very big brush to, to go over that. And see, by taking that, that highlight and going right up against the dark, you can get some really interesting sort of effects. Um, right now, the brush, too, that I'm working with, it, it doesn't have any size. It's really just got, um, I'll show you, it's, it's just got the fade out of the strength on both sides, and that's it. And it's a soft brush. If you want to, you, you can go to a harder brush before this, this kind of thing. And see what's cool about this? Once I've built up this kind of darker darks, I can just go straight over because of the, the ridges, since they're dark. The way this brush works on highlights, it works on most of the highlight parts, or the parts that aren't uh, mid-tone to highlight, I should say. Um, if I switched it to shadows, then it would work right in the pure blacks, and see how I couldn't get that to come back out. So that's an important thing to know as you're, as you're dealing with this stuff. And then just the same for the, for the burn tool. The burn tool, when it's on shadows, it will affect the darkest parts of the image and not the lightest parts of the image. Again, I'm just kind of doing some shapes in here, letting things happen. I'm, just, I'm not, you know, pressing with a lot of consistency because I want these weird things to kind of model kind of shapes to happen, like see these kind of cool things going on up here. So again, it's just kind of once you start building them out, it just becomes a matter of, of defining them more. And you do that with light and shadow like you define anything else.